Hello and welcome to N Strong Strategies for Year End Fundraising. My name is Susan Snazzi and I'm with Resource Development Operations and Collaborative Services. I am so excited to talk to you about strategies for year end fundraising because we are entering my favorite time of the year, the time when all the money comes in. So let's talk about some great strategies for ending on a good note and raising lots of money as we move into 2016. First, why is a year in focus important? Well, 50% of nonprofit organizations report that they earn the majority of their total annual revenue between October and December. So if you're looking at moving into or being in a time when most of your income is coming in, this is a great time to do it as well as you can. A couple of interesting statistics. 79% of people said they would rather have a charitable donation made in their honor than receive, receive a gift that they might not use. I mean, how many scarves are you going to get this year? How many chances to change a child's life are you going to get this year? So maybe that's a promotional opportunity, but it certainly gives us a little something to think about as we move into talking about the end of the year. The average family or donor makes 24% of their annual donations between Thanksgiving and New Year's. So fully a quarter of the donations that are coming in are coming in during the last couple months of the year uh, or less. Why is a, a year in focus important? The last three months of the year account for more than one third of charitable giving, according to the Blackbaud Charitable Giving Report. This is your chance to ensure that you retain your donors. And retention rate right now across nonprofits nationwide is just abysmal. It's about 43%. That means that we're losing more donors than we're gaining each year. But with the year in focus, you have a chance to contact that donor, get them in the pipeline again, and make sure that they're staying connected to your club. Donors give generously at the end of the year. This is when the money's coming in. And of course, a year in focus is important because you need money. And if money's coming in, we want a piece of it. Let's look at it this way. Imagine that December is um, imagine the calendar as a pie. If there were the pie were cut into um, quarters, one for each of the four fiscal quarters, how, well, how would the pie look? 46% of donations would be the last three months of the year. So 54% in quarters one, two, and three, 46% in quarter four. And then if you look at the bottom half of that pie, the, the last week of December are a third of those total donations for the fourth quarter. So planning for the end of the year is important. It's not too late. And that last week of December is absolutely vital for your success. So let's talk about what your year end strategy might be. We recommend that you plan a year end mini campaign. So you handle this the same way as you would an annual campaign or a comprehensive campaign. You have a dollar goal and you publicize that dollar goal. You tell people, we're going to raise $25,000 for the kids of our community with our, with our year-end campaign. Use a range of gifts table. One is available at fundraisingbank.org to decide how many gifts you need at each level to flesh out and meet that goal. Have a timeline and tangible steps and work that plan. There's a download that's associated with this webinar that just lets you very simply lay out what your steps are going to be in terms of the three key areas we'll talk about today, individuals, mail, and digital donor engagement. And you can use that to determine what your timeline and plan will be. Work in concert with your board and staff to determine the dollar goal. Leverage the Great Futures campaign. There are lots of great assets available to you at marketing.bgca.org that will help you to continue to build on the momentum that you've created with your Great Futures annual campaign and that the Boys and Girls Clubs of America has created with the Great Futures campaign. These assets echo the language of the national campaign and will help to continue to differentiate you from other nonprofits in the minds of consumers in your community. The other great thing about these Great Futures campaign assets is they're already created and they look great. You'll see some examples of them throughout this presentation, and these are all ready for you to go turnkey resources available for you at marketing.bgca.org.
You'll also see the customizable Great Futures campaign logo, which you could include in your mailings as just a callback to your annual campaign to your Great Futures campaign. Year-end strategies broadly, let's talk about a few. First, promote a consistent message, ask, and story. So you are continually asking for support for the same thing. You're continually using the same kids in your stories. You're featuring the same kids in your photos. And the reason is it may feel redundant if your mailing and your face-to-face -face meetings and your phone calls and your web page and your social media all are telling the same story and all have the same focus. But remember that every donor won't be exposed to every message that you send out, much as we wish they would be. And so best case scenario, your donor will be exposed to two or three of those messages. And we know that it takes consumers multiple exposures to really get a message. So you want to keep the same message. So if your message is academic success, you should keep echoing academic success throughout free and paid media, online, in your mailings, etc. If you've got a great story of a child who came in with failing grades and now is at the top of their class, continue to tell that story so that you make sure that everyone knows that story that you're trying to promote. They get that message and you're really helping to solidify and crystallize this in the mind of your donors. Make it succinct. We want to write letters that are uh, a beautiful novel, but unfortunately, as beautifully written as that long letter may be, it's not going to get read. So make it succinct, make it direct, make it powerful. We want to tug at the heartstrings, especially around the holidays, and repeat it often. Um, it's going to feel like you're communicating with your donors a lot at the end of the year, and if that's the case, you're doing it correctly. There are three key areas of focus, individual, male, and digital. So first, let's talk about individuals. Focusing on individuals is the most important of your year-end strategies because you can get a whole lot of bang for your buck here. Obviously, you want to focus the most attention on your largest donors, particularly if they haven't made a gift yet this year. You can run a report through your database of your 2014 donors who gave $1,000 or more, but are Liebunt donors, which stands for last year, but not this. In other words, those are folks who gave to you at a significant level last year, but haven't given to you yet this year. Or alternately, you could identify your top 15 Liebunt donors. Particularly if you do not have a dedicated RD shop, Focusing on that top 15 is going to be is going to be enough to start pushing you into a good year end um, turnaround. If you do have a dedicated RD staff, you probably want to focus on more than 15 Liebunt donors. Now find a special way to communicate with those donors. Try your best to see them face to face. Bring a kid with you. Um, stop by their office. Do something special to communicate with them and ask them for a year end gift. Then do the same with your Cybunt donors. Cybunt stands for some years, but not this. So that might be someone who lapsed in 2014, but who had supported you in 2012 and 13. Get out and see those people face to face. Face to face is always best. I'm not going to give you $5,000 on a letter. I'm going to give you $50 on a letter. But if you go and you see me face to face with a board member, a volunteer, a friend, or another donor, um, you're much more likely to get that gift. If face-to-face -face isn't possible, maybe you live in a cold climate state and your donors are snowbirds. That's okay. Consider who is the best messenger and what's the best medium. The best medium is probably not an email, but a phone call from a board member could go a long way toward getting you that gift. Remain donor-centered. So what? how does this donor want you to communicate with them? What would make them feel good? What would be the best way to get this gift from that donor? Some strategies for the year end for individuals. We've got clubs out there doing all kinds of great stewardship things at the end of the year, and the year end really does lend itself so well to the idea that we're giving back to you. So I'm sure that all of you have things that you're doing in terms of year end stewardship, but I just wanted to tell you about a few. There are clubs out there who deliver cookies from the kids. In some cases, they're brave enough to even have the kids make cookies. Um, and when I was with the local club, our kids made cookies. We went out and delivered them. And I had this amazing experience. I stopped by um, one of our very significant donors' offices. 
just to drop off, deliver the cookies. I wasn't planning on a meeting. And he said, come in, come in, let's talk, let's talk. We ended up talking and eating cookies for a good half an hour. And when the check came that year, it was $25,000 greater than it had ever been before. Now, I don't know if it was because of the cookies or if that had already been their plan, but I will tell you that the visit and the cookies and the consideration certainly didn't hurt. Some clubs have taken their kids out to do carols. Some will arrange to go to donors' homes, sing a song, stop by. Others will do this at businesses who are great corporate supporters. And going and singing holiday carols at businesses is a great idea because it helps you with um, program as well as with your RD because it gives you great exposure of who the Boys and Girls Club is in the community beyond just your donors um, and because it's a lot of fun for the kids. I would suggest, however, that all of these things be non-denominational. Remember that the Boys and Girls Clubs of America does not have a religious affiliation is open to kids of all backgrounds and is open to donors of all backgrounds. And the last thing that we want is for one of our wonderful stewardship efforts to end up alienating your donors or making your kids feel like they're not welcome at the club. Some clubs have done handmade cards by the kids that they send to their top donors. This is great because this is arts programming and your donors love it. A video, everybody's got an iPhone now. It's so easy to make a video of kids. Why not make a video of kids thanking your donors and email it to them or a picture doing the same thing. Holiday crafts are another great idea. Um, an ornament, um, a, little, a little something that the kids have made that you can hand deliver to your donors. Anything that gives you the chance to show that you appreciate them. And there are lots and lots of other ideas. See what you can come up with. So that's individuals. Key ideas for individuals is you need to go get out there and see the people who haven't made their gifts yet and try to see them face to face. Year-end strategies for mail are also really important. I would mention that in our webinar library, there is a much more extensive webinar about successful mail strategies. And if you have not yet viewed that webinar, you might want to as you're working on your year-end mailer. Let's talk about some year-end strategies. First, get a personalized appeal letter in the mail ASAP. It needs to be personalized. That is to say, it needs to say, Dear Susan or Dear Ms. Snossy. If you don't know the name of the person to whom you're mailing, save yourself the stamp, throw it in the garbage because a dear friend's letter is simply not gonna get you any money. In your letter, relate to the donor personally. Let them know what they've made possible. Flatter them and touch them as an individual. This isn't all about you. We've done this, our club has done that, our club is so great, we do so many things. It's about the donor instead. Make your letter impactful, emotional, and eye-catching. For it to be eye-catching and impactful, it needs to have lots of visual points of entry, bullet points, um, color if that's in your budget. It needs to have bold, italics, um, call-outs on the side in little boxes, things that make it easy to read. Knowing that your donor may very well only read the first line in the PS, you want to be sure that it's very eye-catching, emotional, and impactful. A response card and an envelope are an absolute must. Um, if you send out uh, mailing without those two things, you are highly unlikely to receive very many gifts. It's just that one extra step of trying to find an envelope seems to just cut down response lit rates like you wouldn't believe. Remember, you're going to have a consistent message. It's the same as will be in your digital communication, your face-to-face -face communication, phone calls, etc. Repeat the ask and do ask in the letter. So you don't want to beat around the bush in a fundraising letter. You want to ask them for money and ask them clearly and repeat it a couple of times. And here again is that web address, marketing.bgca.org. If you're feeling a little overwhelmed right now, it's late in the year, you want to get that letter out. There are all kinds of year-end letters and mailings that have already been put together. They're laid out, they're graphically beautiful, and they're ready to go. You can go to marketing.bgca.org, personalize that letter for your club, and get it in the mail. Third is online donations. Don't forget your online donations. This is some, some interesting information from Salsa Labs about end-of-the-year fundraising in a nutshell. And you can see how much was raised online, um, average donation size per month last year. You can see that it started an uptick in November 
which then got larger in December. So in other words, the average gift received online in December was $128. So, you know, not great, but not bad, right? Not only is the number of donations in December 163% more than the average monthly donation, but the size is also significantly greater. And you can see that top line shows how many more donations per month were, were received in December were all the way off the charts than all of the other months. So although online donation is still only a small portion of the overall donations that you'll receive, it's important and all donations matter. So let's talk about some year-end strategies in terms of online and digital communication. Uh, use multiple channels. Go old school and use the phone. Call your donors and ask for a gift or better yet, your board members can call donors and ask for those gifts. Your web page. Your web page should use the same look and feel on its landing page as is in your social media, as is in your mailing, that is your year-end campaign. So maybe we're using these assets provided by marketing.bgca.org and right on the front page it says give the gift of a great future, click here. There should be a donate now button prominently displayed not only on your front page, but on every page of your web page. Promote your year-end giving on Facebook, on Twitter, have an email campaign. MailChimp is free to nonprofits, very, very easy to use. Any others that you can think of, go for it. Every channel that you can to engage your donors digitally, please do. Um, if you're concerned about how to schedule your campaign, Hootsuite is a great way to pre-schedule the online content that you're going to have. You can go ahead and say, okay, here's what my Facebook post will be this day. Here's what my Twitter um, posts will be this day. Here's when they should land all at one time. That's hoot sweet. That's also a great job for an intern, uh, a volunteer, or a board member. But do have online communication. Use multiple channels. Time your email asks strategically. Of your different um, online communication media, the most important is email, provided it's linking to a well-constructed website that has a way to give. Time your email asks strategically. If you can, send a message in advance of your appeal letter. If budget is a significant issue, you could consider using email exclusively for younger donors, but older donors simply don't give online. The majority of them give through mail, so if you need to cut someone, cut the younger donors and email to them. Send another email two weeks after the appeal letter hits, but send it smart. If I've given you a $500 gift, I probably won't appreciate getting an email asking me to make another gift. So pull those people who have made the gifts and send an email reminding them that they still have the opportunity to change the future for kids with the gift of a great future this holiday season. Ask twice December 27th to the 31st. And that's because there at the end of the year, people are forgetting, they wanna make it easy, they're looking for that quick way to make that year-end gift that they may have forgotten about. And there are lots of fundraisers out there who can tell you stories about that 11th hour gift. I once received a $25,000 gift on Christmas Eve from someone who said, thank goodness I got a hold of you because if I couldn't get a hold of you, I was gonna give this gift to someone else. Um, so those emails are important. Those folks who are looking to make that last minute year-end gift, um, we wanna be available and make it really easy for them to give to us. I think this is an interesting um, piece of information from the Nonprofit Insider Network survey. Um, and this has to do with the tools that are used by nonprofits to ask at the end of the year and how often nonprofits ask. Knowing what our peers are doing is a great way to help us to stand out by doing better. So 100% of the nonprofits included in this study um, were using direct mail. So what that says is you should certainly join that group and send out a mailing. What that also says, though, is you need to have a really good direct mail piece to compete with the tons and tons and tons of other pieces of mail that are coming from other nonprofits. Yours needs to stand out. 92% are using email. We should be using email too. 50% are marketing um, their year-end giving opportunities using their website. So I would say that this is a great opportunity to distinguish yourself from other nonprofits in your area by having the opportunity to give to your year-end and holiday campaign on your website, something that not everyone is doing. 
But frankly, you could ignore all of that and be part of the 83% of nonprofit and then not be part of the 83% of nonprofits who are neglecting in-person asks. Only 17% of nonprofits are going out and seeing their donors in person. And that is just ridiculous when you think about it. I could go and see one donor and get $25,000. Uh, an amount that my website, direct mail, and email combined might not be able to get. So a real focus on seeing people face-to-face, -face, whether it's you, your colleagues, or your board members, is, is not only incredibly important, but it is an unfilled need that other nonprofits are not taking advantage of. This report also looked at the number of year-end touches by other nonprofits, and this lets you kind of get an idea of what strategies folks are using and how to set yourself apart. 27% were doing zero. Those folks aren't going to get very much money at all. 13% were doing one. That's probably their direct mail campaign. 33% um, two touches, 13% three touches, four and six were small enough that they don't really measure. Um, and then five and seven both had the same number at about 6%. So think about what seems appropriate for your donors. We already know that we're going to want to send out a handful of emails, that direct mail piece, and some Facebook exposures. So you're going to have some great opportunities to have year-end touches and to make yourself stand out from your peers. So what, what about year-end planning? Once again, this is what you need to do to have a good year-end plan. Have a brief but achievable plan for individuals, mail, and online giving. A timeline that goes along with that dollar goal and know what your key messages are. Make sure your whole board and your staff know your timeline, your dollar goal, and your key messages. If your key message is, we help change the lives of teens, stick with that key message. If your key message is, we're a place to learn and grow, stick with that key message. That way everybody's on the same page and your donors aren't getting confused. At this point, I'd love to see if we have any questions from the audience. Is there anyone who has questions about their year-end campaigns? If not, I would leave you with the following parting piece of advice. Um, now's the time to get started. Um, don't ignore your year-end campaign. Get out there, get started on that direct mail, get started on that planning. There are a few tools that you can download, including a PDF of this webinar, um, a fun email that did a study of the subject lines of year-end emails. It's a, uh, an article that did a study on the subject line of year-end emails. There may be a few that you see as best practices that you could emulate in your own emails that you send out. Um, and use your board members for help at the end of the year, whether it's printing your appeal letters for you, helping you with your social media, or getting out there to see people. You've got lots of resources at your disposal. Use them to make yourself successful. If you should have any questions about the content in this webinar, please feel free to email or call me anytime. I would love to talk to you about year-end giving. I would love to see the end of the year appeal letter that you send out. I'd be happy to help you improve that letter. You can also reach out to your director of organizational development who can help you in the same way. So thank you so much. Good luck. And I hope you raise lots of money at the end of the year.